I created a space government. I wanted to explore the idea of how humanity will function in space and how it will organize itself in the far future. I'm working on this for my hobby project, a video game, which of course is themed in space. So far, I haven't really thought about the narrative of my game, instead I've been focusing exclusively on the mechanics, but I believe it's time we dived a bit deeper and figured out what this game will be about. I should also emphasize that in this video, I'm only giving an outline of the world, and the world could very well change. Often, people will draw out a world ready for a game, but what ends up happening is that that game will need some rework and some refactoring, which conflicts with the ready-made story. As such, do not expect too much detail for now. Traditionally, some writers start with a character, or often with a premise. Oftentimes, um, I'll have a plot idea or a character idea or a setting idea. However, I've decided to work backwards. Instead of starting with a premise, like a bus driver in space, we start with the motivation. And believe me, I've tried starting with the premise. Twice. When contemplating potential motivations for a spacefaring protagonist, or at least once better than the luxurious bus driver in space, I ran into a fair few themes. A black market smuggler hungry for power. Over here, stranger. A financial scammer desperate for his next payout. I don't have a pen. Exactly. Supply and demand. Like a planet surveyor wanting to find a planet like Earth. To find a planet that can habitate the people that are living on the Earth right now. Yet they all converged on a common element: money. Money, of course, is an excellent motivator, but alone it serves no purpose. Not even in science fiction. No money, no parts, no deal. And so it occurred to me, where can a protagonist do all of these weird jobs and continue to make a living? Well in a space government, of course. Now, I'm not referring to the government in the direct sense, which is often seen as the bureaucratic labyrinth, one that we're very much accustomed to. Instead, I'm referring to the more literal meaning of the word, an organization that governs a group of people. Hence, government. Of course, the beautiful thing about government is that each is different. Denmark's government sells milk, the Dutch government sells drugs, and the space government sells... Well, anything we want, really. Wait, hold on. Before venturing any further, we should ground the world a little. If you give things a name, they feel a bit more real. You have to think about them more. So let's name the space government a solar transport agency, or SDA for short, and the people working there, solar agents. I recognize that solar sounds a bit funny, what are we selling here, solar panels? But we'll get to that later. For now, we've made some good progress. We have a protagonist who is a solar agent and he works for the Solar Transport Agency, which is located in, uh, oh yeah, where are we? Or better, when are we? How about we set the stage? Seeing we're in space every time feels a bit vague. After all, we are in the far future, and humanity has become a type 3 civilization. We are in the process of colonizing different parts of the visible universe. The Solar Transport Agency and the Solar Agents are effectively the foot soldiers at the bottom of the government ladder, doing the dirty work. Think of them as Christopher Columbus. But instead of discovering America, we're discovering other stars. Have you wondered why Transport Agency? Again, this is about having a story and a game that work well together. We want the protagonist to have a motivation to explore on top of other potential roles. And the government shipping stuff isn't anything new. The UK has been doing it since 1516 and the US since 1775. In a sense, we're anchoring the story to something in our own history, making it a bit more believable. <laughs> Of course, the SDA is not just transport. That would be no different than a bus driver in space. The SDA is responsible for colonizing. It would be more appropriate to give them a broader function, such as trade, similar to the East Indian Company. Again, anchoring to the reality. Now then, we have the protagonist, who is a solar agent, under the SDA, which is essentially a colonization department. It feels like I'm inventing new words here. This relationship between the SDA and the protagonist is ripe for conflict. And conflict is essential for progressing the story. Skip a D, skip a danger. I am the rearranger. But the SDA is just a cog in the machine. They're the bottom of the ladder, doing the dirty work. So who's at the top then? The Solar Administration Bureau. Gosh, I've named everything solar, haven't I? Don't get me wrong. It feels a bit meh, but the Empire and the Federation are just overplayed at this point. Anyway, back to the Bureau. The Bureau is a bit like a conductor in an orchestra. And in our setting, the orchestra is the visible universe, while the musicians are the SDA. And you would not be wrong in assuming that there are multiple SDA. 
Effectively, the Bureau would create You're unfired, I need you or disband You're fired agencies for the purpose of expanding the Dominion and one SDA might differ from another. If you remember the example from before, this is exactly like the Dutch and Denmark, two governments selling wildly different products. If we were to draw these out, we can see that there is a clear chain of command, essentially a pyramid scheme. We can color these and assign levels, from 0 to 2. Levels in this case represent the degree of separation from the protagonist. Naturally, if we add something above the bureau, then that would be level 3. This is the hierarchy the protagonist lives in, and the higher he tries to reach, the more challenging it becomes. The visual also hints that the bureau can essentially make other lower departments for any purpose. You're on fire, I need you. Let's say you wanted a government to run a stock market. No problem. Just make an exchange commission and sprinkle in the detail at a later stage. The protagonist can interact with all these parts of the space government, including the freshly formed quantum exchange, but there is also sufficient separation such that the information does not become overwhelming to the player. However, there are places, but no people to interact with. The protagonist is the only character we've outlined so far, and that's a bit lonely. Of course, character outlines are not going to be that different from the department outlines we've made so far. The main difference being that the characters act as gateways to the departments. To start off, let's make two characters. One for the STA and another for the Solar Exchange Commission. We can make Elara, the mentor character, someone who guides the player to begin with, and Victor, the not-so-friendly introduction character. This is great, but what about characters from the SAB? How or when is the player going to link up with them? The correct answer is... We don't care. Still don't care. The SAB are simply too far away from the player, and we can leave characters in that part of the space government floating, meaning that they will be encountered depending on player choice. Again, these characters are outlines, or placeholders. They are simply useful ideas with names attached to them. They can be fleshed out once the game takes a better shape. Of course, if we have characters, that means we need dialogue. And if dialogue is to be considered, then we need a dialogue system. Now, I've looked at a few out-of-the-box solutions for making dialogue. What's in the fucking box? For the engine that I'm using, we have Dialogue Manager and Dialogic. Both are fairly self-contained and feature full, standing above their competition. But I've opted not to go for either. The main reason being complexity. You see, I'd like to keep this project relatively simple. Or at least simple enough to fit inside my head. This leaves us with the option of making the dialogue system ourselves. And thankfully, we have experience with that. From three years ago? Damn. Anyway, stealing my old code from myself, we can easily make a quick system for interacting with characters. Visually, this dialogue system is very similar to the one in Disco Elysium. And the reason is, well, it's just that good. It's based on Twitter. It's really good uh, Twitter. So it flows in a way where most people are familiar, or at least have seen before. Of course, dialogue is one of the more natural ways for the player to interact with the game world. Criminal scum. Having said that, adding a character portrait during dialogue would certainly help sell the interaction part. For the moment, this will be the dialogue system, as well as the narrative outline, that I will be working with. The player, or protagonist, will live at the bottom of the colonization department. The how and why questions will remain unanswered until the game takes up a more complete state. In the next video, I'll build on these bits we've discussed today and try to get a free demo out for people to play around with.